of this chaos with the heat, the city did take some action surrounding homeless camps. Will it make a difference? Here's Maggie Vespa. Portland has been under a housing emergency for close to six years. Many believe there are more tents on our streets than ever. Much of the blame lobbed at city officials who largely stopped clearing camps during the pandemic, a practice which is slowly ramping back up. And we are in the process of reshaping the way we respond to the homeless crisis in this community. Wednesday, the city council voted to amend city code and speed up that process even more. These changes from a still partially boarded up Portland City Hall are kind of twofold. They're supposed to lend clarity to which camps the city plans to clear and where the people in those camps are supposed to go. Among other things, the changes cut through bureaucratic red tape, letting crews clear camps on land owned by any city bureau without checking with that bureau first. Commissioners also gave the go-ahead to build six villages throughout the city where people can camp legally. This means people cleared from campsites can go to these villages and set up their tents. Commissioners don't yet know where those villages will be. All the bureaus were asked to provide parcels. I would say the public will have better information about that in August. Housing Commissioner Dan Ryan said Thursday the construction of these villages will be covered by federal COVID relief money. They should be open by the end of the year. And this is unprecedented to go this fast. So uh, I, uh, I realize that and I'm challenging myself and the entire city to make sure that it's all hands on deck. I really do want to believe this, but at this point, based on actions that we've had in the last year, it's just words to me. Stacy Gibson owns multiple subway franchises, including this one downtown. She says Portland's housing crisis is crippling the city's business community, and she's over hearing promises to tackle the problem. We still have a lot of issues with theft. Um, the homelessness, the abuse on the staff when they're coming in and demanding bathrooms or just stealing soda. Adding to the pessimism, commissioners also voted Wednesday to deprioritize clearing low impact camps. That means camps that are more than 150 feet from pre or elementary schools, more than 100 feet from high schools, more than 50 feet from parks and more than 10 feet from the entrances to businesses or residential structures. Ryan said he feels for business owners like Gibson, but he calls homelessness a humanitarian crisis. I really am uh, want to get away from from the false binary between the sweep or not to sweep. Instead, we needed clear direction on how we regulate that and also on how we build. That said, calls for some camps to be cleared are tough to ignore. Case in point, Laurelhurst Park. KGW began covering the Southeast Portland camp back in November. In the months since, dozens there have refused to leave, and activists argue forcing them would be inhumane. But neighbors are terrified. They report harassment, theft, even fires. Commissioner Ryan said this new code change will make it easier to clear this camp, but he wouldn't say when that might happen. And KGW went back Thursday only to find Laurelhurst looks the same. We asked Asked people there if they'd be likely to leave and head to the city's safe sleep villages. Oh yeah, I mean I think it's great. Um, uh, I mean it's uh, probably not a complete answer to you know the problem. I mean I think uh, more like permanent housing would probably be a better thing to shoot for. But I guess for the time being, maybe that's a good option. The changes to Portland City Code take effect immediately. Maggie Vespa, KGW News.